Hello, and welcome to the Future Proof Podcast. This is our bi-monthly podcast where we talk about what we've been working on and anything cool we've been planning. I'm Gregory Avery Weir. And I'm Melissa Avery Weir. So we wanted to give a little update on Exploit Zero Day. Yeah, so if you've been following us, you know we've been working on Exploit Zero Day for a very long time. We're very close to the end. We're currently working on job nine of Headless Swarm, which is uh, going to be the finale job that wraps up that plotline. When we finish job nine, the initial development of that, we're going to do some checks and then release job eight, which has been done for a little while, but uh, has been waiting for for our our pipeline to fill up some more um and then our next step will be working on a revision of the whole uh story because it's been a long time since we've been doing this i think i saw uh uh, an initial announcement went out in 2016 and so (laughs) we uh we are going to make sure that like the story we started telling is the story we finished telling and make any little (laughs) changes in text or adjustments to the to the branching and also just make sure that job nine works properly <laughs> with with everything um and then once that's done that revision then job nine will come out and head to swarm will be done and we'll probably t- talk to you again and encourage you to you know tell folks you know that like if someone's been holding off on picking up headless swarm because it's been unfinished which is perfectly reasonable i think uh mm-hmm. that it's done now and so you can just get the full version of it um and if you haven't checked out Exploit Zero Day, you should check it out now. There's an entire season of Free Story that's been there that's that's really good, as well as a bunch of miscellaneous jobs and, and, and a whole lot of stuff that our players have made that's totally free. We've done another release lately that is not Future Proof Games related. Yes, so we have talked, I think, in previous episodes about a non-Future Proof podcast that we are doing called Before the Future Came. We have now released the first episode of Before the Future Came. It is temporarily not a Star Trek podcast, courtesy of the WGA and SAG After Strikes that are going on, where they have asked podcasters to not promote Struck Works, which would be Mm -hmm. things on streaming platforms. We are totally in solidarity with that. So we're reading and partaking in other utopian sci-fi material. And our first episode is about the novella Binti by Niede Okorafor. It's an amazing story. Um, It's really good. Yeah, it's super good. You don't have to read the story to follow the podcast. We give a summary when we talk about thematic points and things we find of interest we provide context about what happens around it if you listen and you find we don't give enough please let us know that would be really good feedback for us to have yeah yeah we can definitely (laughs) adjust and and give more info generally we'll be talking about uh the values that show up in utopian science fiction so Mm -hmm. if that's a, a thing you're interested in definitely check it out yep and we've probably mentioned it before, but we take a very, um, a very queer, a very socialist, a very um, sort of communist approach to this mm-hmm. sort of thing when we look at our utopian futures and, and assess them. So um, that is an excellent book to start with. And then I, I don't think I will say what the second episode will be. Yeah, just... you can you can be surprised when you get to the end of the Beanty episode. Yes, um, the way the podcast works is that one of us sort of in secret picks what the next work is that's going to be discussed. And so it is revealed on the podcast to the other folks and to listeners. So, um, and that is hosted by myself and Gregory and Dr. Lucy Arnold, who has been on a podcast episode before of this podcast, um, Mm -hmm. two, three years ago when we released um, the survey results and did sort of an analysis on our, our sort of community outreach stuff. Yeah. So it's very exciting. Um, the podcast is, again, called Before the Future Came. It is in all of your sort of major podcatchers that you like. If you want to listen to it on the web for some reason, uh, <laughs> it is at beforethefuture.space. Episodes are transcribed. And if for some reason I get this this episode out extremely quickly um the binti one might not be transcribed fully but uh it is in flight and going forward we should be releasing simultaneously 
Cool. Yeah, it's very exciting. So in more game industry related news, um, Unity, the makers of the game engine and development platform Unity, have been acting a fool. Yeah, so I think we talked about this two months ago in our previous episode on on some of the annoyances of working with Unity. Um, and they have recently announced that uh, they are going to start charging game developers per install of their games, which is just a, an absolutely wild thing to do yeah. um, and and is going along with a bunch of other really, really shitty uh, corporate decisions they've made. Uh, we are going to be okay probably because we sadly are not past the earnings threshold that at which this would apply um hopefully someday we can deal with that problem but uh there are a lot of big developers that used unity that um are in a pickle at the moment trying to decide exactly how they're going to deal with just basically unity saying hey we're going to make up a number that you now owe us without you giving permission (laughs) for us to charge you for this previously um so uh, please be sensitive to any developers who are going through that sort of thing. Uh, and uh, if you are a developer, we highly recommend uh, trying Gato for your next big project. Uh, if it's um, something that Gato seems like a good technological solution for. And otherwise, there are a bunch of other platforms that I think will um, you can trust a little bit more than Unity these days. Mm-hmm. And if, if Gato is not a word that sounds like a word, it is spelled... <laughs> G O D O T. So people yes. might say it got ought or got any number of ways people yeah, might say Godot, it. Yeah, Godot you'll sometimes hear. Yeah. I'm a I'm um, a weird literary person, so I'm I'm like, well the the playwright of Waiting for Godot specifically said that God is an important syllable in the name, but yeah, either way it works. Yeah, for for Googling purposes, someone has to know yes. what all the letters are. <laughs> yep. Yeah, Unity Unity making this move is baffling their communication has been particularly poor when when questions have been raised like hey what about demos or what about you know your epic free sales or you know free deals or whatever they've kind of gone huh well i guess we should think about that which is absolutely wild um it's a pretty big Mm -hmm. shift off of their previous their previous stance and the good news is that it looks like, as of the wording I saw a couple days ago, that this applies to downloads after the start of the year or after some time in 2024, which means that like all retroactive installs <laughs> for people who bought games in like the um, Black Lives Matter bundle aren't mm-hmm. going to get hit for that. But also, Unity doesn't collect analytics and unity games are not phoning home to unity by default so there's a lot there's lots of questions this whole thing's pretty icky um especially in conjunction with the ceo selling off stock (laughs) it's it's a whole mess um i will link to some relevant like lineups of the factual situation of what's happening uh in the show notes just to sort of give some some broader context if anyone wants to go down that rabbit hole and who knows maybe by the time this episode comes out they will have completely backtracked on yeah <laughs> on this yeah so this thing. is this is as of uh wednesday evening so it might be different uh yes tomorrow wednesday september 14th yes so yeah it's it's a mess we'll see where it goes and Consider other platforms. It's there's there's other cool tools out there that are professionally used and produce good work. So, our final bit of news is about the Majesty of Colors, ironically, which is a game built in Unity. Um, the Apple App Store has a policy where games must be updated on a certain cadence or they will be removed from the store, even if there is no need to update them. So they gave us a notice. We have deprecated Mac support for a couple of years, in part because we Mm -hmm. don't have a Mac on which to perform builds for Mac OS or or, um, Apple in it, or for um, iOS. And it's absolutely required for iOS. 
Mac OS, you can do other ways. Given that we don't have a way to do builds and that it is not cost effective for us to spin up a way to do builds, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and in short, we don't make a lot of money on iOS at, mm -hmm. at all, so it doesn't make sense for us to spend hundreds or more on an Apple machine just for one game that doesn't make a lot of money. So Majesty of Colors is going to leave the App Store before the end of September. If you have already purchased the game, you, you have it. It will always be available for you to download. I say always. It will continue to be available for you to download. Who knows what <laughs> Until they doing. have a new policy again. Exactly. So if you've already purchased it or purchased it before about September 20th, 22nd, something like that, you will have Majesty of Colors. After that, it disappears from the App Store and cannot um, cannot be purchased. So that is, I think, the end of that. It is it is still on Google, um, Google Play. It is um, available, of course, on desktop platforms uh, via Itch and Steam. But this, I think this is the end of it on iOS, unless something changes. We could find some way to bring it back or, you know, have some sort of mechanism for that. But we do not currently. That's a bummer. But, uh, yeah. But the good news is it continues to be, I, I think we think, a, a great game and an expensive game. Uh, so if you really feel the urge to, to play it and uh, you were going to play it on iOS... It is very affordable, we think, on PC. So that yes. version, you can get at itch.io. And you can find all of our stuff at futureproofgames.com. We're over on co-host as FPG and on YouTube as Future Proof Games. You can give us questions or comments on our blog, uh, on social media, anywhere you see us, or uh, by emailing us at info at futureproofgames.com. Our theme music is Juparo by Broke for Free, which is used with permission. Mm -hmm.